All right, this is an overview of exponential functions. Now, as a quick review, in this unit, we've covered three function types. We had linear, remember, straight line, that's linear. We had quadratic functions, they were U-shaped. Open it up, open it down. And today we're going to wrap it up with uh, exponential functions. So, exponential functions we got what's called exponential growth or exponential decay. And so we'll demonstrate this via two examples. All right, so let's start out with our exponential growth. Now you can define it two different ways. You have this, well, let's start out, you have P naught, which is, um, that's simply your starting value. Sometimes they'll call it your initial value. So that's your initial value or starting value. And it simply says that some initial value is growing by a certain rate, which is R percent, every time period. Now that could be every year. Uh, that's typically what you'll see. And then after so many time periods, we want to find a new value. So you have what's called a recursive form, okay, which is P sub n equals one plus R times the previous value, okay? Now that's recursive. Since we're dealing with functions, we can actually change the explicit form to function form. So we have P of n equals your initial value or your starting value or P naught, that's typically what some people will call it, times your growth multiplier raised to a certain amount of time, which is N. In some cases, they may use T instead of N. And then in some cases, they'll give you the growth multiplier. You won't have to do 1 plus R, okay? So R is your growth rate, one plus R is your growth multiplier. Now, if you have a decay, and let's just add an aside, let's say exponential decay. So you will still have your initial value, and then instead of having a growth rate, you will have a decay rate, so one, minus r raised to n raised to a power of n and let's call that p of n so remember growth going up here decay your decline and so think of flu vaccinations okay flu vaccinations you want people to be vaccinated so the incidence of flu declines with time. And actually, let me clean up this graph. It would look something like that. All right, so let's look at an example. So we've got this fish population in a lake. It begins with a thousand fish. The survival rate of offspring each year is 10%. We're gonna, we want to complete this table using explicit or what we'll recall uh, functional notation or cursive form of the equation. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to define our parts. Our initial value is 1,000 fish. Our growth rate so every spring that, that fish population is growing by 10%. So point, 
point one, zero or point one. So our growth multiplier. Now they didn't tell us the growth multiplier, so we're gonna define it as one plus our growth rate. In this case, would be one point one zero. So our function will look like p of n equals 1,000 times 1.1, and you could put zero if you want, raised to a power of n. So using functional form, after one year, our fist population, we will, will say p of 1 equals 1,000 times 1.1 raised to a power of 1, which gives us 1,100, 100 fish. All right, and we continue this process. So after two years, we take our initial value times our growth rate in this case, raised to the second power. And we get the new population is 1,210 fish. All right, three years. Again, you just, all you're gonna do is change the value of n or t, or x, whatever variable you're using. Notice the initial population is still the same. Growth multiply is still the same. We're going to the third power, 1,331-ish. And you keep continuing this process. So after four years, fish population is, and we're going to round here because we're going to end up with 1,461 fish, point one fish, right? You can't do that, so we're going to round that to 1,464. After five years, you should have 1,611 fish, All right? And then what happens with this exponential growth at 10 years, notice we're at 2,594 fish. And then finally, after 20 years, the fish population is 6,727 fish. Now all of these are approximations especially once you hit year four because we start rounding, okay? These are all approximate values. And let's see what this looks like from a graphical standpoint. All right, notice on your graph, so let's, if, let's say we labeled this, all right? All right, now, time, our x-axis will be in n. This would be our, what you would call y-axis or p actually. This would be p. All right, notice this value right here, that's our starting value. That's our initial value. And then you just plot a series of points. And you see that even though this this seems to look linear, there's actual actually there's a curve to this, and it it should the population is growing, so we should have something that that's going uphill from left to right. Okay. All right. So now let's say they gave us a formula, and we had to interpret. We didn't have to. We didn't have to solve anything. We just had to interpret what was given. 
So in this particular case, we can ask a couple different questions. What's the initial value? Okay, so we use it. We have a model that's use that's being used to predict annual tuition prices at a local college. So the initial tuition is four thousand six hundred dollars. So it's their starting tuition in the year 2010, okay? Now, R is we need to find that. So what is it? Okay, we know our growth multiplier because it wasn't given to us. So we assume growth multiplier equals 1 plus R. In this case, we, we have 1.072 equals 1 1 plus R. Alright, we subtract 1 from both sides. And you end up with Zero point zero seven two equals R. Which implies that now that's a decimal. So it all goes back to that first lesson. You gotta be able to convert from decimals to percents, percents to fractions, and vice versa. Okay? So point zero seven two is a decimal. We want to write that as a percent. That's 7.2 percent, which tells us that tuition is increasing by 7.2 percent per year. All right, so now notice it didn't ask us to solve for anything. We just had to dissect what was given. One more example, okay, of exponential growth. Tacoma, Washington's population is in 2000, all right? This is year 2000. It was about 200,000 people in this population of that city has been growing by about 9% each year. Write a recursive formula for the population of Tacoma. Write an explicit formula for the population of Tacoma. All right, so first thing, let's go back and look at recursive. All right, notice this is your recursive formula, okay? So P of N times the growth equals the growth multiplier times P sub N minus one, okay? So what we wanna do is when we write this formula, this recursive formula, we'll say P of N equals our initial value. Well, actually, we didn't do that. We need to find our growth multiplier. So one plus 9% equals 1.9. Zero 0.09. So you will have 1.09 P of N, P sub N minus 1. Okay? That's the recursive formula. Now the explicit formula, we've been using function notation. So we will take our initial value of 200,000 times our growth multiplier raised to a power of n. That's the explicit formula, okay? And that's probably the form you'll, you'll see more often than not. All right, so now we're going to answer this question. If this trend continues, what was Tacoma's population in 2016? Okay, so first thing, we've got an explicit formula. 
you know, we started in, or we want to know the value in 2016. This model uses data based on the start in year 2000, so that means that's 16 years later. So we want to go P of 16 equals 200,000 times 1.09 raised to a power of 16. So check your calculator. Take 200,000 times 1.09 raised to a power of 16. And our estimation based on this model is that the population of Tacoma will be 794,061 people now. Your calculator may have, we may have 1762, okay? But we don't have fractional, so we're not gonna have fractional people, so we're just gonna approximate this as 7, 794,000 61 people and we're going to put units okay and so that's how you apply exponential growth to a set of data or to a problem situation